Master Chef is back, searching for the country's best amateur cook. Come on. <laughs> oh, you can't say it's got chilli in it and not make it chilli. Don't, 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 don't. Oh, no. The contestants battle for a place in the quarter final. It's a masterpiece. Only the best will make it through to the final challenges. Don't slow down. Yeah, everybody, pudding! Absolutely beautiful. It's an incredible piece of cooking. They want to realise one dream, and that's become the MasterChef champion. Kid in a sweet shop, that's me. Let's find the stars. These eight amateur cooks all aspire to become MasterChef champion. But only three will make it through to the quarter-final. Being here at MasterChef is pretty awesome. I can be very competitive. Bring it. Right now I feel absolutely petrified, but I'm also raring to go. I think I'm very good at my cooking, very good, and hence the reason I'm here. I push myself very much. Now I'm here, I just can't wait to get cooking. Welcome to the MasterChef kitchen. Your first test is the market test. You'll have 10 minutes to choose your ingredients and one hour and 20 minutes to cook your one plate of food. Ladies and gentlemen, to market. In today's market, the fish section includes prawns, salmon and mackerel. And in the meat section, chicken legs, quail and lamb rump as well as a wide selection of fruit and vegetables. Thinking of something on the spot under pressure is freaking me out a bit, but <laughs> I don't know, we'll see what happens. A bit of a plan in my head and the rest of it I'll make up as I go along. <laughs> I've got some then. It's a bit risky, but I'm going to take the risk. I think I'm going to do some sort of prawn pasta. I'm going to make the pasta myself and uh, hope it all goes well. Um, oregano. If they can hold their nerve, they're going to be absolutely fine. But I tell you what, this is a nerve-wracking round. Without good choosing, there's no decent doing and there's no great chewing. I'm very happy with what I've got. Hopefully, it will work out good. Yeah, I can do this. It's easy. It's like cooking at home. I think I'm OK with this one. I'm just worrying about the time already. <laughs> This round is really important because at the end of it, three of you will be going home. One hour, 20 minutes, one plate of food. Let's cook. Fifty-year-old Richard works for an energy company and loves to cook for his wife and three children. I can fillet fish, I can do meat, I can do veg. Desserts aren't a huge strong point, but I do cook them. So yeah, I think I've got the skill set to sort of cope with this. Richard, why, why are you here on MasterChef? I guess my kids put me up to it, particularly my daughter. She reckons I cook the best pizzas in the world. He said, Dad, you should do it, you should do it. So here I am. What are you making? Going to make rock and chicken with homemade harissa sauce, flatbreads, and spiced couscous. I want to eat this, mate. Well done. Cheers. Richard's chicken with couscous and harissa sounds pretty tasty. I'll be impressed if he can make harissa without a recipe, his own flatbreads without a recipe. But presentation for Richard is going to be quite difficult. How's he going to make it look wonderful? 
but you can't say it's got chilli in and not make it chilli. Leicester-based Visha was born in Tanzania and gets her love of food from her Indian parents. Indian cooking is where I'm very, very strong. The flavours, I know them down to a T. I can cook it blind if I have to. And I know the results will be amazing. I am making you a chicken leg with a garlic and scotch bonnet paste. I'm observing that with lentils in a tomato sauce with lime on it. I am going to use a paste of cinnamon, coriander seeds and star anise and I'm going to put that in butter and make the potato fondants. Visha, big flavours. Can you balance them? Of course I can. Taking a potato fondant and spicing it, I think it's actually quite clever. It could be really lovely. But star anise and potatoes? Crikey. 46-year-old Lindsay lives in Newbury and started cooking from a young age with her parents and grandfather. I'd say I'm very competitive. Not just with other people, but with myself. I compete against myself all the time. And if I'm not happy that it's the best, then start again. Lindsay, what are you making for us? Some lamb with fennel and garlic, mashed potato with sage and parma ham, and uh, cauliflower cheese. Watch that pot. Yeah. <laughs> That's what happens, you see, when I get distracted. Are you OK? You look slightly nervous. I only get nervous around good-looking men. Oh, no. <laughs> got Lindsay, the pot for a second time. <laughs> oh, dear. Shall I get home now? <laughs> Lindsay has got all the flavours of a Sunday roast. There's a lot going on, on that plate. How's she going to make it look vibrant and exciting? 30 minutes gone, guys. Laurentino grew up in a large Filipino family and has been cooking since he was four years old. I think my food is great. I've got the belly to prove it, so... <laughs> Laurentino, because he's cooked the prawns whole in their shells in a sauce of coconut milk with lemongrass, ginger and chilli. It may not be the prettiest dish in the world, but I think it's going to be really, really tasty. Laurentino, interesting name. Thank you. Interesting. Are you an interesting cook? I try to be. What sort of cooking do you do, you do at home? Combination of everything. Um, my family originally from Philippines, do a lot of Filipino cooking. Grandparents taught me everything that they know. You've been brought up with really good food. I'm just beginning to get a bit excited. Pretty much. So I'm quite optimistic of what I'm making right now as well. 22-year-old Nathan works as a dog handler, but dreams of becoming a Michelin-starred chef. I work all day, and then as soon as I get in, I'm cooking all night. I've cooked for a few different people now, a few friends. They've said the taste is good as it looks, so... Pretty confident in, in, in me cooking. Nathan, what are you cooking? A minted crust lamb, fondant potatoes, Madeira sauce. I'm going to do some shaved truffle and I'm going to pour it with the lamb. A bit risky, but... Mate, for a self-taught young cook, that's very uh, ambitious. Hopefully it works. Look forward to it, mate. <laughs> Thanks. Nathan's put a crust across the top of that lamb, but the crust is sitting on top of fat. So when the lamb is sliced, you'll have a layer of crust. Delicious. A piece of lamb. Delicious. And in the middle, a big lump of fat, which is not delicious. Ah. Such a great game. Use your fingers. Quick, get the flour around the side. Get it around the side. Get it in there. <laughs> Just wash your hands upwards. Bosnian-born Ilda discovered a passion for food when she moved to the UK seven years ago. I am naturally competitive. I'm a bit of a perfectionist. I never give up. I would love to get as far as I can. But the competition is tough, so we'll see how it goes. Ilda's promising us a butternut squash ravioli. 
inside. She has got paprika, nutmeg, and cumin all together. I hope it works. One hour's gone. You've got just 20 minutes left. Leeds-based Danielle was taught to cook by her dad and dreams of one day owning a street food truck. I feel like my nerves potentially could get in the way. I'm going to have to sort of channel them and try to just stay calm. Take some deep breaths, five, four, three, two, one, and just go for it and just see what happens. I'm doing some sort of like Asian inspired mackerel flatbread wraps with some pickled onions and some crispy kale. I haven't eaten anything like this. <laughs> Anyone else? But you interest me. <laughs> oh gosh, all right, okay. Thank you. <laughs> it could be a fish tucker. And that could be wonderful. I hope the dish works for her. Otherwise, we're going to have a mackerel and pickled onion sandwich. 22-year-old Will is a fundraiser for the law faculty at Cambridge University. Normally, I do like to plan out my recipes. I like to have an idea of what I'm going to do. I think I'm able to pick myself up if things go wrong, but I do like to have a plan at the beginning at least. What are you making right now? Well, so I'm going to do a ricotta and a spinach ravioli, and that's going to be served with um, a tomato sauce and deep-fried prawns. Fine, OK, I've never had... Oh, listen, I've had a fried prawn, I've had ravioli, I've never had those two combined. Yeah, well, who knows? It might be delicious. But you don't know yet, do you? No, nope, no idea. <laughs> I don't make ravioli very often, I don't make fried prawns very often, so it's all, it's all, all an experiment. You're not filling me full of confidence right now. Do you want to sell it a bit bigger? <laughs> it's going to be delicious, Greg. You're going to love it. Thank you, Will. Thank you very much. I couldn't find any breadcrumbs, so I'm doing oats on my uh, deep fried prawns. Will says he's experimental. Fantastic. But the first round of mastership, you're experimenting, that's a risk. I hope it's a calculated risk for his sake. I am feeling a little bit pushed for time, but I think it's plausible that I might get done. Guys, listen up, you have just five minutes. Too rare. Yeah, my presentation's not the best, but we'll see. I'm very happy. I hope the flavours are just exactly how I expect them to be. 90 seconds to finish up. Doesn't look like you've got taste well. Ladies and gentlemen, that is it. That's time up. Well done, everybody. Well done, everybody. Can we eat the leftovers? <laughs> Laurentino, up you come, my friend. London underground worker Laurentino chose the tiger prawns and cooked them in coconut milk, ginger and garlic with boiled rice and sliced mango. There's something missing off that plate, which I'm really sad about. The sauce you cook the prawns in, I taste it in the pan, it is delicious, and it's gone. Rice is nicely cooked. Prawns well cooked, your, your flavour balance is great. My issue is, there's not a great deal of process and cookery skill there to judge you on. Your cooking is sound, but the sauce is now gone, which is a real shame, because I want that sauce with my rice. First round was pretty intense. I've got the flavours right. It's just all about showing them more of what I'm capable of. That was tough. Yeah, it was tough. NHS project manager Danielle's pan-fried mackerel with pickled onion, spring onion, chilli, crispy kale and yoghurt is served on a flatbread. 
It's beyond my powers of description. <laughs> I've never seen anything like it. It's fish on a flatbread with some crispy cabbage. Oh, God. I don't mind it at all. You've, you've cooked the fish OK. There's raw spring onion in there, which gives heat, and chilli that gives heat. Some of your crispy cabbage has gone so crispy. What's that term? Burnt. It's burnt. Yeah. You know how to make things, but you've got to find a different way to put them on a plate, Danielle. Yeah. And I would suggest probably not from the top of a stepladder. It looks really random. As I was plating it up, I was like, this is a mess, what are you doing? <laughs> but, yeah, we'll see. See what happens. University fundraiser Will has served ricotta and spinach ravioli with a tomato sauce and prawns coated in crispy oats. Prawn in oats. Oh, yes. That classic combination. I have never had a plate of ravioli with prawns on top. Me neither. Struggling to get on with this one, Will, I'm afraid. Prawn and oats I'm struggling with because I feel like someone's dropped some crustacea in me porridge. The ravioli itself is lacking flavour, it's lacking seasoning. The combination of ricotta cheese and prawn, which has been coated in oats, I find quite disturbing. Uh, cheesy oat custard porridgey prawns with tomato sauce, it's just not right. I don't think I've really shown my full potential. I think I'm certainly capable of more. Psychology student Ilda has also made ravioli. Hers are filled with spiced butternut squash and served with a red pepper and butter sauce. I like the buttery sauce with the sweet peppers across the top but there isn't a great deal of flavour inside that ravioli. I feel they must have split and, and water uh, rushed in. Your butter sauce is tasty, but the filling for the ravioli needs to be more generous. And across the top of that, you need salty parmesan cheese. Housewife Lindsay chose the lamb rump and served it with sage and parma ham mash, cauliflower cheese flavoured with mustard, olives and a port sauce. Your cauliflower cheese is cooked really nicely. I like the mustard through it. Your potato with the sage and the ham is good. Your lamb is cooked quite nicely. You know how to make a sauce. Olives on the plate, they're really not necessary in any way whatsoever. OK. It's far, far too much going on on that plate. However, all of those bits, tasted individually, taste very, very good indeed. I will never, ever sit on the sofa at home again and pass comment on what the guys and girls cook. It is so much easier from your own front room. Company director Visha's dish is chicken leg rubbed with a garlic and scotch bonnet paste, lentils with coriander and spiced fondant potatoes. Your flavours are lovely. I think your use of star anise giving those potatoes an aniseed flavour is nothing short of inspired. However, that whole thing is going to be ruined if you serve us an undercooked chicken and raw lentils. There's flavours on this plate that I really like. The execution, ah, oh, but the flavours, yeah, yeah. You know how to flavour food, that's for sure. Ever since I've been cooking, I've never had an undercooked chicken and that's just really annoyed me. <laughs> so, yeah. Energy company worker Richard has served Moroccan spiced chicken with couscous, flatbreads, homemade harissa sauce and coriander raita. Is the chicken dead yet? 
I just wanted to make sure it was cooked. There are ways, and I'm sure you know, of checking whether chicken's cooked without actually hacking at it. Agreed. I don't know what you've used on the chicken skin, but it's delicious. Your flatbreads are really tasty. Your harissa has got a good bite of chilli on the background. Your flavours are good, Richard. Mate, you're not the finished article, but you may well have the foundations. Thank you. Presentation is always going to be a weakness with me and it's something I'm going to have to work on. But to say the flavours are nice and it all married together and oh, are just amazing. Last up is dog handler Nathan. His lamb rump has a mint and basil crust and is served with fondant potatoes, roasted carrots, beetroots and finished with a truffle and Madeira sauce. That crust that was on the top of the lamb now looks like some weird kind of stuffing mashed potato. You can't put crust on top of fat because the fat won't render. Your crust itself is really highly seasoned and it tastes to me of basil rather than of mint. I like your carrots. I quite like your sweet sauce. Your fondant's cooked very, very nicely. Um, the fact you've got a truffle on there makes me happy. But I think there's technically there's a few issues here. That sauce is too sweet even for me. However, there are things on your plate I like. I like the meat, like the potatoes, like your crust, like your carrots. It's not bad. <sighs> Disappointed still. Um, I did a couple of things that I knew I shouldn't have done. I feel good as well because it's, you know, I can learn from it. We tasted some good food today, but on the way, we also tasted some experimental stuff and some stuff which was quite adventurous. Richard presented me with some really strong flavours. In fact, I go so far to say Richard's was the tastiest dish in the room today. And I'd like to see Richard go through further. Lindsay with her mustard cauliflower cheese, her piece of roast lamb, too much put on one plate. However, a good cook. Lindsay interests me enough for me to want to see her cook again. I like Nathan. Nathan with the lamb, uh, classic cooking. I think he's got real promise. I'm going to put a vote of no confidence in for Will. Oh, mate. What was he thinking? I've learned something today. Don't coat prawns in oats. It doesn't work. We have Will going home. We have Nathan, Lindsay and Richard going through the next round. Good. And that now leaves us with the other four to work out who stays and who goes. Visha. Laurentino, Ilda, and Danielle. We said at the start of this that we'd only take five of you through to the next round and that means that three of you will be going home. The first person to leave us is Will. Will, thanks very much indeed. Thank you. Thanks. The second person leaving us is Danielle. Danielle, thank you very much indeed. The third person leaving us is Ilda. Thank you. Obviously, I seem to go out first, but you know that's what happens when you don't cook the food that you know you should be cooking. Sad, obviously, that I'm going, but other people were really good, like other contestants. I like to think I can do better. A bit disappointed, but yeah, I can relax now, have a glass of wine. <laughs>
You now, of course, get a chance to cook your own food. You're cooking for me, John, and a place in the quarterfinal. Do you know who else you're cooking for today? Two of the finalists from 2011 and the winner, Tim Anderson. Jackie Kearney and Sarah Dannison. Your job today is to cook two courses in one hour and 15 minutes, four plates of each course. We have three plates in the quarterfinal to give, which means at the end of this, two of you will be going home. I wish you the very best of luck. Let's cook. These dishes that I'm making today, they have to be really good because every Filipino knows about these dishes. If they end up not being that good, I might not be able to get back into Philippines if ever I go to visit. The two dishes I'm going to be making for you both will be the Lumpia Shanghai, which is a spring roll that's made with mints. Second course is uh, chicken adobo, chicken that's been marinated in garlic and soy sauce and cooked in vinegar. Why these two dishes? We always serve them in family gatherings. They're your go-to, will work, everybody loves dishes? Pretty much. I'm going to attempt to make the um, wrappers from scratch. Wow, you're actually going to make spring roll wrappers yourself? Yes. Never had both these dishes before. I've had a spring roll in my life, so I'm intrigued. I'm looking forward to you guys Good. trying it. A chicken adobo sounds to me to be marinated chicken on rice. So I'm hoping it's got huge zingy flavours, John, because it's going to be chicken on rice. What Laurentino wants to do is show us some skill by making the spring roll wrappers himself. That, I think, is really risky. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. You have to make a decision soon. I'm just going to go for the backup. So you've got some spring roll wrappers just in case? Yes. Perfect. There we go. Are you going to serve us up another culinary first? As like diced chicken on the bone? Or are we going to have some decent presentation <laughs> today? Surely can only get better. What are you going to make for us? A pan-fried sea bass on trizio potatoes with a salsa verde dressing. And your dessert is? Vanilla panna cotta with a strawberry sauce and a strawberry shortbread. What about a place in a, in a quarterfinal? Ah, oh, that would be incredible. I think because they are relatively simple, I think I have to nail them. I can't afford to cook the fish wrong. It lives or dies by that. And the same with the panna cotta. I like Richard's menu. Quite classic dishes, but what he's got to do now is present them beautifully. I feel like it's more important for me than, than anyone who's here. I am young. I haven't really got a direction at the moment. So I don't know what my plan is, so I'm hoping that this is where I find my, my path, where I'm going. What are you making for us? Pan-fried king scallop, which is going to be on butternut squash and honey uh, puree. To go on top of that's going to be uh, black pudding crumb. That's going to be served in a bit of a theatrical way, uh, some dry ice. And then for the main, I'm going to do crusted lamb again. Hopefully this time I'm going to get it perfect. Quarter final place, Nathan, what would that mean to you? Everything. I want to, I want to go home and, and know that I'm coming back. Nathan has just covered his scallops in salt. He pan fries those scallops with that salt on, they are going to be salty. And I mean, properly salty. Main course of crusted lamb is very similar to the dish that he cooked in the first round. Didn't get the crust right, it fell off and it burns. So hopefully you can correct those mistakes now in this round. Really happy to be here, especially after the last round that I had. That was just horrendous but have had a word with myself, and today the food will be good. Actually, the food will be excellent. 
Visha, what are you going to cook for us? Tilapia fish in coconut curry, basmati rice, poppadums from scratch. Along with that, you'll have a coriander and tamarind chutney. And then for dessert? A traditional Indian kheer. It's basically a rice pudding and a pistachio wafer. Have you, honestly, have you timed this? I will be fine. Visha is promising us a piece of fish in a coconut curry. Basmati rice with lots and lots of sesame seeds. A kachumba and poppadoms. There is so much work going on there with Visha's main course. I'm worried she's not going to get it done on time. However, if Visha gets all that right, we are in for an Indian feast. Look at that! Somebody's made their own poppadoms. Mind right? That's amazing. The competition is high and therefore I'm not leaving anything to chance. I keep wondering why I feel like I'm going to fall over then I think, oh, breeze. <laughs> if there wasn't any panicking, would it be MasterChef? Right, Lindsay, but what are you going to cook for us? Pan fried duck breast with a crispy chicken liver and a cherry and port sauce, pureed parsnips, roast potatoes and calvanera. Dessert is a raspberry souffle with iced berries, hot chocolate sauce and a shortbread. Why are you doing so much? Because I'm only here once. If it goes right, fantastic. If it goes wrong, I walk away saying I did my best. This means a hell of a lot to you, doesn't it? It does. It means everything. Why? Because um, I've gone a bit quiet in life for the last few years and it's time for me to, to show and shine again. Lindsay's menu was really ambitious. And I'm still concerned she's throwing too much at the plate. 40 minutes gone. Well, since MasterChef, my life has changed a lot. I'm a chef consultant. I do recipe development. I run my dining club in York. All is well, really. It's been a long time since uh, I was in MasterChef now. I'm still cooking my street food. I do a lot of events. Last year, I published my first vegan cookbook. I can't even remember my life before MasterChef. I've got the restaurant open, been open for about a year. It's really tough. On the other hand, it's great and it's really nice to see the place full of happy customers eating ramen and drinking beer. Cheers. 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 Glad to be back. Laurentino, you've got five minutes. Okay, Laurentino start is Lumpia Shanghai. I guess it's a kind of a spring roll thing. I'm hoping they're going to be nice and crispy with a really distinguishable filling. We don't want any of that indescribable mush going on in the middle. You've got a little parcel of spring rolls, like a present. Just a little bit. You're done, yeah? I'm done. And your timing is superb. Thank you. Well done, mate, that's good. I like that. Hi there. Hi. Good. Sorry. Thank you. You're very welcome. Today I've made you a dish called Lumpia Shanghai. It's another version of spring roll, but it's made with minced pork. Thank awesome. you. Thank you. Thanks. Looks great. It looks exactly how I hoped it would look. tastes very much out of this. The seasoning is not there. I like the vinegar dip, because that's the only thing that's got a real punch. Yeah. Also, I think he should have used a fattier mince, because the pork's a bit dry. The dish needs a kick. It's missing oomph. The 
They're quite tasty, aren't they? There's a little lumpia. I love the sharp vinegar dip. I don't care much for the burger sauce one. It actually tastes like a cheap burger sauce you get from a burger van. Mate, listen, love the look of the starters. Can you do the same with your main course? Fingers hope. Come on, fingers twisted. Then Laurentino is making chicken adobo. Oh, no. Filipino dish, right? Yeah. I haven't had it in a long time. I'm looking forward to it just because I haven't had it for so long. I'm not happy with the crispiness. What did you say? I'm not happy with the crispiness. Are you sure you want to serve them then if you're not happy? We won't have time to refry them. Don't you? How long two minutes. Got? Two minutes? Yeah, go on, Get them back in! Yeah, fry them. Is it sizzling? It's sizzling now. Is that crispy? Crispy enough. You ready to go? Yes. Thank you. Thanks, Laurentino. Thank you. The next dish I'm serving you is chicken adobo, Thai jasmine rice, so nice crispy garlic on top. Hope you enjoy. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you. Oh, no. That's not gone well for him, has it? I hope it tastes good because it certainly doesn't look good. The chicken's nicely cooked. It needs more sweetness from the onions, more salt from the soy sauce. It needs more acidity from the vinegar. He just needs to really not hold back with those flavors. This rice is cooked to despair. I think Laurentino's had a bad day at the office here. I can see the old family recipe in there, but I suspect he's not done it justice. That chicken dish from Laurentino, the crispy skin is all greasy, the rice has been overcooked, and I think the chicken's dry. That was very scary. Definitely very scary. Went quick. So quick. Richard, three minutes. Yep. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Is your fish not on yet? No. Fish is going on now. Three minutes to go. Whoa, you're pushing it to the wire, aren't you? Richard's cooking pan-fried sea bass. Not quite. Patience, patience. With chorizo potatoes and salsa verde, which sounds good. I mean, it sounds like flavorful, good, good food, but it is simple. He needs to nail those flavors with this, and he needs to cook all that really well. Very good, bright green. Off you go, Richard, good job. Well done, well done. You know, it's nice things, but his presentation is non-existent. What I've served you today is uh, pan-seared sea bass on trizio potatoes with a salsa verde. Okay, thank thank you. you. I hope you enjoy. Thank, thank you. you. Some parts of it are cooked very nicely. I think there's a nice balance, actually. It's, it's kind of rich, it's kind of sweet, it's kind of acidic. It's the burnt pieces which I find really surprising, which is a real shame because actually that salsa verde tastes pretty good. Nicely cooked fish, really well made salsa verde. However, he's burnt some of his chorizo and his presentation still leaves a lot to be desired. 15 minutes for yeah. panna cottas, yeah? Yeah, 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 yeah. I hope there's going to be a nice wobble there. I think this is actually going to come down to presentation because it can either look kind of elegant and lovely. Yes, yes, yes. Or it can look very sad and boring in a way. Got well, 60 seconds. Go on, my friend. Off you go. Good effort. I don't know what's shaking more, the panna cotta or you. <laughs> At least on. it's shaking. I've uh, cooked a few vanilla panna cotta with a strawberry sauce, strawberry shortbread biscuit, and uh, strawberry decoration. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thanks. There's a good wobble. Wobble, wobble, wobble. Oh, yeah. Yeah? The texture is there. It's set it right. 
but there is no sugar. If you get a really nice bit of strawberry and not too much of the panna cotta, you then... The sweetness is there. It's not sweet. It's put no sugar in. Yeah, it's forgotten the sugar. Shattered. That was intense. It's just unbelievably intense. I know exactly what went wrong. However, it went wrong. <laughs> Nathan? Yeah. Four minutes. Nathan's got a taste of the sea. Scallops, butternut squash, black pudding, crumb. Looking for good ingredients presented well on a plate there, aren't we, really? 90 seconds. It's all going off, Nate. The sound of moving dry ice. Yeah. It's magic! Brilliant. Absolutely well brilliant. Good off job, you mate. go. I've cooked for you pan seeds, king scallop, which is sitting on butternut squash puree and uh, black pudding crumb, some dry ice for theatrics. Thank cool. you. Thanks Thank you. very much. Hope you enjoy. Looking forward to it. Yeah, man. Definitely very theatrical. The scallop's overcooked. Mine's so tough I can barely cut into it. That squash puree, it doesn't work. That's not a flavour I like. I think he's trying to be too clever too soon, perhaps. I think overall the dish, it, it doesn't really come together. Not for me anyway. It looks so good. It's so clever the way it's been presented. The issue is the salt around that scallop has made it hard as a bullet and that butternut squash puree has got way too much honey in it. Rack of lamb. Macedoine potatoes, never heard of those. Carrots, parsnips, rosemary and red wine sauce. Absolute classic French plate of food there. I hope that the rack of lamb is cooked to perfection and well rested. I certainly don't want to see blood on the plate. Your crust is better, isn't it? Three minutes, Nathan. Not serving them? No? No, no they're, too, they're not good enough. Is this your sauce? Yes, happy. Okay, ready to go? Yeah. That's it, mate. Well done. Well done. I've cooked for you a minted crusted rack of lamb and deep fried Macedonian potatoes with carrot puree and a rosemary and red wine sauce. I apologise because there was supposed to be some parsnip on there, but I didn't feel it was good enough to put on the plate, so. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This is the weirdest presentation I think I've ever seen. The lamb is cooked all right. The crust, this minty-ish flavour. Carrot puree, very plain. The lamb is beautifully cooked, but it's let down by everything else on this plate. Nathan's got great ambition, but this main course hasn't worked for him. It's under season, and that lamb's not cooked enough. Glad I've done it, but I'm not um, happy. One's a defaultless dish, and I think both of them weren't quite perfect. Two minutes. Ooh, Vicious first course, lots of elements. We've got tilapia, coconut, fish curry, sesame seed rice. Cooked? Yes, cooked. Yeah! Kachumba, yum. And encapsulated tamarind chutney. That sounds interesting. It sounds really good. It sounds like a lot. Can we go? Yes, we can.
Thank you. So today I'm serving you um, tilapia fish cooked in a coconut curry sauce, served with a homemade poppadom. Okay. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. The fish is lovely and moist. It's the flavour that needs to sing. And boy, it sings. This is delicious. It's really, really good. The papadam's really crunchy and substantial. Rice is nicely cooked. And the curry. The curry's great. It's, it's got bags of flavour. This girl knows what she's doing. There's nothing subtle about that, is there? That is proper lip-smacking, tingling of your mouth, cracking your teeth type curry, that is. <laughs> Good to take your eyes off something. Be sure you, you have four minutes, okay? I'm hoping that my wafer is going to crisp up. I think it's gone a bit spongy. You're okay, you're putting yourself under too much pressure here. This means everything to me, that's why. Why don't you serve up the rice pudding and everything else? Okay, and I can wait for that. All right. This is dessert is saffron and cardamom infused rice pudding with pistachio wafers and saffron syrup. I love rice pudding. I'm really hoping that she's, this is really over the top. Like, I want it to be really creamy. How are we doing? It's not crispy. I'll have to serve it. So do you really want to serve it, then, if it's not right? Um, no. Very nice. You ready? Fisha, take it out. Well done. Thank you. Well done. Thanks. Oh, gorgeous. So I am serving you a traditional Indian kheer, which is literally rice pudding. I am so, so sorry that I wasn't able to serve the wafer. It just didn't crisp in time. So I hope you enjoy the pudding. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank well you. Done. Thank you. I really like this. It's super creamy, gorgeous level of flavour of cardamom and saffron. I think this is delicious. The flavour is great, but a little bit more sugar would just sort of lift everything. It's beautifully spiced, and I like the saffron. However, it's not very sweet. That's the second dessert I've had today where the cooks forgot the sugar. That was immense. It's nothing like cooking up at home for a party, is it? This is different. This is no, no playing about. Lindsay, you've got four minutes on your main course. I've just got to dish up everything. All the elements are done. I just need to put it on a plate now. Right. Pan-fried duck breast and deep-fried chicken livers with cherry and pork sauce, parsnip puree, roasted potatoes, shallots and cabronero. It's a lot, probably too much. Right, you've got about 60 seconds now, Lindsay. I'm worried about her getting it out on time and, and doing everything uh, to a quality that she's happy with. Right, this is actually officially time up. Right. Come on, let's go. Breathing like Darth Vader. <laughs> You're lucky I'm breathing at all. <laughs> We're now two over. Killed yourself too much here, haven't you? Three minutes over, that's all. Do take a breath, all right? Do you know what won't work? You fainting on the table in there. Let's go, let's go. Take a breath. It's a nice looking dish. Come on, off you go. Go on, Lindsay, it looks lovely. Smile at them. Hello, firstly, I'll apologise for being slightly over. It's all right. It's all right. I have served you pan-fried duck with crispy chicken livers and a cherry and port sauce. Enjoy. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. I think of all the things we've eaten today, this one looks the best. There's something really strange about this meat, I'm not entirely sure. I totally, totally disagree. I think the only thing this dish really needs is salt. And the roast potatoes are great. Look, 
It's really soft. Who complains ab about soft meat? I don't know. Would you I'm prefer not it to be it. chewy? I don't Would you know. rather have duck jerky? What's wrong <laughs> with you two? Nice, soft, really well cooked duck. Lovely sweet puree, good sweet sauce, crispy potatoes. Get in there, the lins. I'd like the whole thing to be seasoned just a little bit more. Saying that, it's the dish of the day. 15 minutes now for your souffle, your biscuit, and your ice berries and white chocolate sauce. I've done that wrong, then. Have you put sugar in there already? Yeah, no, I've messed it up. I've gone and put the sugar in before I put the coop, before I put the raspberry in. Right, so what do you do? I need some more eggs. Is everything else ready to go? Everything else is ready to go. I think doing a souffle on MasterChef is actually quite brave. Dangerous. Very dangerous, but, but awesome if she does it. Oh, too high. Yeah, I know. I'm trying to move it down. Do you know what they call this? Panic. Correct. It smells good, Lindsay. Thank you, John. Are they ready? They look good to me. They're about four foot high. Look at them. Go, Lindsay! You're done, right? Very, 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 very impressive. Lindsay, you're our new Master Chef hero. Off you go. Go. I have made for you a raspberry souffle with iced berries, hot white chocolate sauce, and a shortbread biscuit. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, yes! It's not sinking. A very accomplished souffle. Really light, really sweet, big raspberry flavour. It's great. The girl done good. That lady gives herself far too much to do, puts herself under far too much pressure. However, she is a decent cook. Exhausted. <laughs> I feel a bit emotional, actually. Finding, getting it all out is just, yeah, it's quite emotional when you actually put it down in front of the previous contestants. Um, whew, yeah. One of those days, ups and downs of MasterChef. And our invited guests had a few criticisms about the food, and I think fairly so as well. However, there was also a lot of good old-fashioned hard work going on in here today. The cook of the day was definitely Lindsay. She was struggling with her timings. However, her food was very, very tasty. Lindsay, I think, is the, is the standout cook, John, and she, she should go through to the, to the quarterfinal. I think Visha's disorganised, but I like her food. I like the fact it's bold. It's spiced highly. It's seasoned really well. She goes for it. She does big food, ambitious food. I like her. We had real high hopes for Nathan. Great ambition, but unfortunately it didn't work for Nathan today. There is no point doing dry ice and presenting your dish with such a fanfare if you haven't got the balance of flavours right. So that now leaves us a discussion about Richard and Laurentino. I don't know what to do with Richard because we had lovely sea bass and a really lovely salsa verde, but he burnt the chorizo and the potatoes. We've then got a perfectly made panna cotta that he really took a lot of care over and forgot to put the sugar in and sweeten it. I mean, these are really silly errors. I think that Richard can do things, but he just seems to get little things wrong along the way. Laurentino's first course, his little spring rolls, the little vinegar sauce, I liked a lot. The main course left a lot to be desired. The chicken was dry and it was just flavoured with, with soy. Very, very disappointing. Not only did I not like it, you didn't like it, and neither did the guys in the dining room. If I go home after this round, I can be a little bit upset, but at the same time, it's been really rewarding so far. I think I could have done a lot better. You can only do what you do, and I've done the best I can. I'd be very disappointed to go there. Who's got the skill? Who's the better cook? 
Who can go further in the competition? I've got to say, I think you know the answer. Our first quarter finalist is Lindsay. Congratulations. Well done. Very, very well done. <laughs> the second person going through to the quarter final is Visha. <sighs> Congratulations. The third and final quarter finalist is Richard. Congratulations. Laurentino, sorry. Sorry, Nathan. Slightly disappointed, but really happy for the other contestants that have made it through. Been a great experience. It's disappointed, obviously, but nothing I can do. You're called a finalist. Very, very well done. I'm just unbelievably astounded that I'm still here. Quarter-final, a quarter-finalist, unbelievable. I could almost just do a dance and like punch the air and go absolutely mental. It is now just going to be me full force all the way. You've got to be in it to win it, as my nieces and nephews tell me, and I'm planning on going all the way. Next time, eight more cooks battle it out for a place in the quarter-final. Go, 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 go. Squeeze a lemon away from absolutely unbelievable. It's kind of weird. What? I can't remember anything this daring this early in the competition. 